Hi guys and now welcome to part two of your abnormality homework. So we've already looked at um, the first two definitions, so deviation from social norms and failure to function adequately. Hopefully you've taken a bit of a break, you've filled in some of the essay plans, maybe done some of the exam questions and we're now ready to move on to our next definition. Now before we get going you just need to be aware that I have changed the order slightly in the booklet. You'll see why when I get to the end of this but we're going to jump over um, definition number three and we need to move forward onto definition number four which is statistical infrequency. So if you can all do that for me now please find the relevant section in your booklet and we're going to get going with that. Now, before we have a look at this next definition, we need to have a quick kind of like go over once over in terms of research methods. Um, this definition is a statistical definition. So it's not like some of the others where it's just characteristics and trying to come, come up with a cutoff point um, of what's normal or abnormal based on subjective judgments. This is pure statistics. So what we see on the right hand side here is something known as a frequency distribution graph okay now a frequency distribution graph is used to represent percentages of people who achieve a particular score within a band or within a range. Now, we use frequency distribution graphs to illustrate a massive range of uh, skills, traits, behaviours. For example, we could illustrate age. So if we looked at um, the age of the population, we would end up with a frequency distribution graph. It probably wouldn't look like this one on the right-hand side because it would probably be skewed um, in favour of kind of like early adults. Um, we could also do age and we could do rates of disorders, which is what we're going to be using it for. Now, like I said, this distribution graph here is what we would call a normal distribution. Um, it tells us um, what percentage of the population is experiencing um, particular disorders. Now, a normal distribution graph is as follows. Um, the mean the mean, uh, sorry, the mean, the mode and the median scores lie in the middle. So anybody who falls outside of that range, okay, is deviating from the statistical norm. So you can see here, all right, everybody who is in this central section here, all right, so one standard deviation away from the mean, then they would be classed as normal. They are in the centre. If we look at a normal distribution curve, everybody who falls within one standard deviation away from the middle, which is the mean, the mode and the median, they are classed as perfectly normal. What we're interested in, though, is what do we class as being abnormal? Now, using statistical infrequency, it is anybody who deviates more than two standard deviations away from the mean, all right? So on this graph here, you can see it's the lower edges of the normal distribution curve. So it's anybody who falls two or more standard deviations away from the mean is classed as abnormal because for all intents and purposes, the behaviour that they are demonstrating, in this case, um, abnormal behaviours or mental illnesses, are statistically infrequent. They are uncommon, okay? So that's just a little bit about normal distribution curves and how we're going to utilise them in this area. All right then, so moving on then, back to our little format, all right? Definition number four to name it, it's called statistical infrequency. To say how it categorises abnormal behaviour. Behaviour is abnormal if it is uncommon in the general population. So I've already said um, anything that's uncommon is statistically rare. So that's sections one and two. Name it and say how it defines it. Now, the next little bit, okay, is just building on what I've already gone through with you. You don't necessarily need to write all of the examples into your booklet. I'll tell you exactly what you need to write in there. You do, however, need to write this. So, to get the third mark, the little bit of elaboration, you say, if a characteristic occurs only in a minority of people, then it is considered statistically infrequent, 
brackets rare and it is therefore abnormal so if it only occurs in a small minority of people it's statistically infrequent it's rare and it's therefore abnormal so as i've already just said to you if we look at the normal distribution curve, okay, and consider an example, if we score people on a scale indicating how much they possess a characteristic and then plot this data on a frequency distribution, most characteristics would be normally distributed. And we've already seen one of those curves. So we've said anybody in the middle, okay, one standard deviation away, or one or two, is statistically frequent. The mean, the mode, and the median all lie in the middle. So anybody who is further away, so anybody who is two standard deviations or more away from that mode, it is classed as being statistically infrequent. That only accounts for the minority of everybody who's being analysed. So, scores achieved by only the top or bottom 2% of the population are considered statistically infrequent. So, that's just explaining what a normal distribution curve is. The bit that you actually need to write into your booklet, all right, after you've finished writing the other little bit that we've had. So, you should have here, statistically infrequent, brackets rare and therefore abnormal. You need to finish that sentence off with, abnormal scores are therefore more than two standard deviations away from the mean. Okay? Now, if you don't understand that, just learn what it says, okay? If you don't understand how the distribution curves work, all you need to know is that anything that occurs in a minority and that is two standard deviations away from the mean is abnormal. So now then, how do we apply this? It is quite difficult. So don't write this in your booklets at the moment. This is just to demonstrate to you. So Amanda's score on a social skills test is 21. The mean score is 50. The standard deviation is 10. Is Amanda's score abnormal? Explain your answer on the back. Now, obviously, we're not doing this in class, so we've got to just be able to understand whether or not her score is abnormal based on one of these small standard deviations. So her score of 21 is more than two standard deviations below the mean okay if you look at this she falls into that category there okay so therefore her score all right <clears throat> is more than 2.5 uh, sorry occurs in 2.5 percent of people therefore her score which we see of 21 is statistically in frequent okay she falls in to that top 2.5 percent of people so therefore she is abnormal so now what you need to do is you need to apply to a disorder so for ocd we've got approximately 0.5 percent of us adults are classified as having severe ocd that is statistically infrequent if it's only in 0.5 percent of the population looking back at a normal distribution curve if we just look at that you can see that's right on the outer edges okay that's three standard deviations away from the mean so ocd is therefore statistically infrequent Depression, approximately 2.2% of US adults are diagnosed with severe bipolar. Um, again, you can see that that is two or more standard deviations away, so that would be statistically rare. And phobias, 1.9% of US adults are diagnosed with what is classed as severe specific phobia. So these figures, all right, come from a 2014 survey by the National Institute of Medical Health um, and they therefore are stating that those three disorders occur infrequently within the general population. They are further than two standard deviations away from the mean. Um, only a minority are experiencing, therefore they are rare, they are abnormal. So what I'd like you to do now please is I'd like you to pick two and put those into your booklet just like we have done with all of the others. Next thing that you've got to do is complete the fourth row of your sheet now, okay? Remember this is definition number four, so don't put it in the space for number three because that's um, for a third definition which we're gonna look at after this. So it goes in the bottom row. Remember, this is quite hard, this one, so make sure that you've got the outline and elaborate absolutely spot on. Talking about two standard deviations away, it's rare, it's infrequent, it occurs in only a minority of people. All right then, so once we've got that done, 
we need to just have a quick stop and think about how this evaluation is going to be different to the other ones that we've done. Now, this one doesn't really fit the mold because it does actually have strengths. Now, before we look at those strengths, I do just want to point out to you, though, that the strength is only a reversal of the subjectivity point that you've already done for the other definitions. So what is the opposite of subjectivity? Most of you will already know, objectivity. So this definition, okay, is going to be objective rather than subjective. So now let's move into our evaluation. Okay, compared to other definitions, statistical infrequency is more objective. This is because it provides clear guidelines on how to identify when a behaviour should be classed as abnormal. Any behaviour that can be scored in a quantitative way can be plotted on a frequency distribution. And if it occurs in the top or bottom 2%, then it is classed as abnormal. Unlike failure to function adequately, where deciding a behaviour, uh, deciding sorry, if a behaviour creates observer discomfort, it's totally down to opinion. So this means this definition is way more reliable. And for this reason, clinicians tend to prefer it because this one will produce high levels of agreement between psychiatrists. They will be able to say the same thing. If they've got the normal distribution percentages and they know how commonly occurring these disorders are, they can class the person as either abnormal or normal. So that's the first strength. Moving on now then into our weaknesses. However, a limitation is that statistical infrequency is not necessarily a defining feature of being abnormal. This is because some statistically rare behaviours are actually considered normal and vice versa. Some abnormal behaviours are statistically common. For example, National Institute of Mental Health figures from 2014 state that 6.7% of US adults suffer from major depression. Now, this differs from what we've seen before, but this means that if it occurs in 6.7% of the population, then that means that it's technically not infrequent because it falls within the normal range. Conversely, highly intelligent people with an IQ of over 130 are in the top 2%. So yes, they are statistically rare, but they wouldn't be considered abnormal. So this therefore means that this definition ignores desirability. It's saying, all right, that statistically common behaviours are abnormal and sign of an illness, whereas statistically rare behaviours are desirable, such as intelligence. So statistical infrequency, not necessarily a defining feature of someone that is abnormal. Moving in to the final criticism. This definition is era dependent. So this one we've already covered and you should be familiar with this. This is because behaviours that were statistically rare years ago may be more common in today's society and vice versa. So for example, those that are rare today may have been more common in the past. For example, and we know that we've got to use these examples um, in order to pick up the credit. So 10 times more people suffer from major depression now in comparison to 1945, which would mean that the disorder is not abnormal today, but would have been 70 years ago. So this definition is assuming that normal behavior now, all right, depressive depressive behavior, okay, is common, but in 1945 it was a sign of abnormality. But what you need to consider is that the behavior hasn't changed. So how could it be abnormal then and not now? So that definition, all right, is era dependent. It only works and only applies to one period in time, okay? So we've now got all of that definition filled in. We've got the description, which you should have hopefully put in your big A3 summary sheet. And we've also filled in the evaluation points. So now then, if we just have a look at some exam practice, okay, you need to find the anger stimulus in your booklet, okay? So if you can all just do that for me now, please. If 
you just flick forward into the exam question section. Apologies for not having the uh, page number on this. I missed this one off. But it should be easy to find. So, we're going to have a look at the Angus stimulus. It says, before leaving the house each morning, Angus has to go around checking that all the lights are switched off. He does this several times before he leaves and it makes him late for work. Give one definition of abnormality. We're going to go with statistical infrequency. Part B, use this definition to explain why Angus's behaviour might be viewed as abnormal. So, we're starting with that part number two, that general idea. So, behaviour is abnormal if it is uncommon in the general population. Angus would be classed as abnormal if the behaviour of checking that lights are switched off occurs in less than 2% of the population. Brackets, as his score would be two standard deviations away from the mean. Now, if you say that, that will get you your two marks because you've got the general idea and you've applied it to Angus. So please make sure that you've got that answer written in. Now, next things for you to do is to complete your essay plan on statistical infrequency as we've done with the other ones. Again, it says that there's a quizzes um, hyperlink here, but they are all just located on Moodle. So if and when you're finished, if you want to go off and have a go at those. Now, it's going to change a little bit slightly here because the next definition that you're going to look at is not actually a video, it is a prezi. So I'm going to stop talking to you and Lisa's going to do the deviation from ideal mental health, which is definition number three between pages 10 and 12 in your booklet. It has got a voiceover, so Lisa's going to be guiding you through this one. Um, if you want to load the Prezi up on your own, you can follow this link. Otherwise, the next link down on Moodle beneath this video link is a Prezi. So you need to go through that definition, okay? But then you must come back to me because after you've finished that definition and you've got all the knowledge of all the four definitions into your booklet, there is some really, really important exam practice that we all need to do. So finish this one, have a look at the deviation from ideal mental health on that Prezi link and then there's a final video link which is called exam practice. Do not forget to do that exam practice because that's what's going to be handed into your teacher so that she can see that you've done your work. So I'll hopefully see you again in a little while. Thanks.